Today I'm in Dover, Ohio. They got great restaurants, a couple of local wineries you can go to. There's several museums here. And the museum I'm here to see will blow your mind. But first, here's some things you can see while you're in Dover, Ohio. And if you're lucky, you might catch an RJ Corman diesel switching something out. You can stop by the Tolan Herzig Famous Endings Museum. They have an extensive collection of famous funeral memorabilia like folders, photos, documents from deaths of presidents, famous celebrities. They even have a piece of Lincoln's funeral train in there. It's the largest known collection of its kind. Or you can visit the Almond Museum of Radio and Television, which they have on display in hundreds of games, toys, comics, and many other things related to early TV and radio. They have over 200 TVs from the 1930s and 1950s, but as you can see on the sign, it is by appointment only, so please give them a call. Just a few miles south of Dover is New Philadelphia, Ohio, where there you can visit Shunbrun Village, which was the first Christian settlement in Ohio, where you can spend a day with the kids or grandkids at the Tuscora Park. They have three swimming pools, year-round picnic pavilions, mini golf, and vintage amusement park rides as you can see behind me. Or you can do things such as the carousel, the Ferris wheel, a roller coaster, and of course, you can ride the train. And that just names a few. So come on down to New Philly and check it out. Just up the road from Dover, about five miles on Route 39, is the Brighton Bot Winery. You can visit their cafe and you can get a wood-fired pizza and a fresh salad. They have live music events and, of course, wine tasting. Pick your favorite bottle to take home with you. You should come check it out. And, of course, just up the road from Dover is Sugar Creek, Little Switzerland of Ohio. They have many wine, meat, and cheese shops, great tourist gift shops, all kinds of tourist activities. And, of course, if you plan the day right, you can even get a tour at the Age of Steam. As you can see behind me, we're at the Walters Carving Building, and it's the home of Ernest Walther Museum and Gardens, which is home to the collection of some 73,000 buttons, Swiss-style gardens, and a famous Walther's cutlery. But most of all, his famous wood carvings of steam locomotives, made of walnut, ebony, and ivory of the finest detail. So let's go inside, we'll take a look, and see what's going on. In the gardens, we have a saddle tank, on display and a very nice B&O caboose the plaque says it was built in 1927 and it ran until 1974 And we have a nice maintenance of way hand cart. Well, those were the days, weren't they? I like this old switch stand. I've never seen one like this before. Not even in some of the museums you stop at, I haven't seen this type. So this is nice. All of these are arrowheads found in the area displayed in his first workshop. Hi, I'm Jack. I work here at the Warther Museum in Dover, Ohio. Um, why someone would want to come visit the Warther Museum? Uh, I grew up here. Uh, I'd always heard that Mooney Warther was the world's master carver. What that meant to a little kid uh, wasn't much. As an adult, it means a lot to me. Um, I've worked here now almost five years, and I think the most important aspect of Mooney as a person is the idea that he seemed to have a sense of investing his life in things that were going to last longer than he did. Um, he made a windmill for his wife uh, on their wedding day, gave it to her and said, let's see who runs longer, me or the windmill. And the windmill is still running. We have a display here in the lobby of postcards that when he traveled overnight, instead of writing a postcard home, he would carve a postcard home. Those are things that you just don't throw away. 
But we still, years after Mooney's gone, we still admire the postcards that he did in some hotel room in Indiana a uh, hundred years ago. Um, the, the, the models themselves are, are a testament to the fact that he was just always wanting to leave something behind. Mooney turned down massive offers for his, to, uh, his uh, many displays, but his, he wasn't about the money. And he actually died with very little money. But what he gave his family was a legacy that's now lasted to the fourth generation. So this is still a family-owned business, privately owned. Uh, we have the gardens here. We have the museum. Um, people come all, from all over the place. I mean, countries away uh, to see the, the carvings of the world's master carver. So I would say that uh, the man himself was bigger than life. And uh, a, a trip to the museum here would, would help somebody understand a little bit more about who he was and what he did. I give you the reveal. This room is incredible. You need to get to the Walters Museum. Now I will not show you every piece, I'll just show you teaser pieces. But there's much more to this museum than just this room. So let's take a walk. As been mentioned before, these are carved from walnuts, ebony, and ivory. No tools were ever used that were powered. It's all knives. And this is what he considered to be his masterpiece.
This is his evolution of steam. So he did a model on the evolving of steam powered equipment. Here it is, the UP Big Boy. This was his last car piece before he retired. So this was his last major project. I would say this would be his masterpiece. But The detail on these are incredible. This is the ivory room. So carved from ivory in every last little detail. Down to the springs, the chains. All the steam pipes, every last bit of coal, every grab iron, every piece of wood, all out of ivory. Even the John Bull was carved out of ivory. This is the Lincoln Funeral Train, also made of ivory and ebony. And right in there you can see Mr. Lincoln. driving of the golden spike so this is depicting the Andrews raid of the great locomotive chase during the Civil War
So before leaving Dover, be sure to stop by Blazing Burgers and get yourself a nice burger, a side, a salad, or any kind of shake. It's delicious. Oh yeah, that's some Blazing Burgers. Hell yeah. <laughs> so just eight miles north of Dover is the, in the town of Stroudsburg, Ohio, is the Lynn Auto Drive-In Theater. It's the oldest drive-in theater in Ohio and the second oldest continuously operating drive-in theater in the world. The first being in Shanksweller's Drive-In in Orfield, Pennsylvania, which is 15 miles outside of Allentown. As most of you know, the missus is a drive-in freak. Works out for both of us. I rail fan by day, then we drive in by night. And this is screen one at Lynn's Drive-Ins. And this is screen two at Lynn's Drive-In. As you know, we never pass a track or a drive-in. But if you notice, right behind that screen is the Cleveland line for the R.J. Corman Railroad. They serve Dover and New Philly. So on occasion, you might get the train passing by. So I hope you guys enjoyed the trip around Dover and its surrounding area, and I hope you enjoyed the Walther's Carving Museum. I had a great time, a great day. The food was good. The company was good. Wife was with me the whole day, even though she wasn't in the video. If you guys are ever in this area, please stop by and check out some of these things, especially the Walter Scarborough Museum. It's a great place. Till then, like, subscribe. Happy out.